Hello, good afternoon. This is Denzel. How are you? Doing great. Good to connect. Thanks for booking time on my calendar. Appreciate you sending the... Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I and I got um, both of your... So you can definitely help me understand that. Before we dive into the, into the numbers and everything, because this is our first call, I want to give you the floor a couple minutes just to talk a little bit about yourself, what you do uh, for work, how you found me, um, and main things that you'd like to accomplish on today's call. And I'll steer it from there. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Um, as it relates to the home that you're buying, are you already like at closing? Is this thing done? Okay, what, what's, what state are you uh, in? Got it. And the loan that you borrowed from your uh, life insurance policy, how much was that for? Okay, and that's your down, what is that, 10% or 20%? Okay, so so that's 202. Working with many people in the past who have bought homes, um, typically it's about a year before you can get a HELOC. From what I've, yeah, but if, yeah, so I'm saying like that's the kind of like the general norm, but I'm pretty sure with the amount of money you're putting down, all that, all that space, that's available. Um, if we can, you know, find a bank that's willing to loan ninety percent, so it'd be like eight point seven five or something like that. Yeah. Mm, okay. Wonderful. Yeah, I am a fan of uh, Alliant Bank. I've had quite a few clients work with them, so I'm familiar with that one. And yeah, that is the best offer that I've seen in this current environment with the intro rate of the 4.99 then it jumps to about it'll probably be around 8.75 percent based on your credit and then honestly um looking at your spreadsheets i mean we really don't have crazy debt right it's just a property yeah so the alliant credit union auto loan right what is the interest rate on that that would definitely be our first move uh and then this carpet guys uh for the 27k 450 a month what's the interest rate on that okay so we're gonna leave that alone yeah so we're gonna leave that alone yeah like this is your this is where you're planting yourself you don't you don't plan on going anywhere else anytime soon when you spoke to Alliant, they'll give a heloc on on the condo no issue there the, like is there a do you know what the ltv okay nice which was 650 right so we could probably get an 80k heloc yeah, honestly, if you got an $80,000 HELOC, you know, times two thirds, we're at 52.8, you could make a strong argument for going slightly above that and just move the entire loan of the car right into the HELOC. You could make a strong argument because of the 4.99 rate. So uh, yeah, I'm a fan of that. And then I see that we're sitting on quite a few credit cards. So I'm pretty sure somewhere in there, we could probably see if there's any um, 0% offers at all on, on, on any of these cards. And we can kind of leverage the HELOC and a credit card to run expenses. So they just kind of work in, in conjunction. And that's going to dramatically, you know, reduce that 4.99 cost even, even further. That 919.04 back in our economy. It looks like you well underestimated your income at 13.5. And with everything and expenses, we're coming up at like 283.97 positive cash flow a month. But just talk to me a little bit about that. Is that like not going to happen or is that more, is that pretty true? So let's assume we had the HELOC right here, right now. We, we do our, our first move would be moving the car into the HELOC that creates this 919 of cash flow. We're looking at a little over a thousand bucks in, in cash flow. Now there's a couple of things in living expense. Like you put $500 a month budget for investing in yourself. Would you would you continue to do that or okay, it's just going to park. All right. So your main focus right now is let's pay off debt, right? You've got investments, right? I see a quite a few things going on here. We got annuities, we got life insurance, we're involved in real estate. We've got investment accounts. So to a degree, it, it would seem like those are good. It's, it's what it seems like and we could focus a lot of our time and attention on debt elimination. If an opportunity does present itself, are you thinking about using what you already have, maybe moving it or selling to go to something else? Talk to me a little bit about that stuff there. Yeah. What what is right. <clears throat> okay. What is success for you as it relates to real estate? What would be successful for you? Right. What what does that look like? Is there a certain dollar amount? Is there a certain dollar amount or is it a certain amount of properties? Okay, so it's not necessarily contingent on amount of properties, it's more of a number. 
15,000 a month in passive income through real estate. When once we achieve that, is it, does it then become sustain and then perpetuate? Or are you like, let's hit the next one. Let's keep going where to, to right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, that really helps me understand who I'm talking to. Cause I talk to folks that are like Denzel, I just want to get here and then sustain and you know, uh, uh, f sit on the, on the beach and, you know, wait for God. I don't know. And then there's other people. Yeah. There's other people that are like, dude, I'm, I'm in it till God calls me, you know? So it's like, there's no stopping. I'm going to keep pressing the gas. Now, obviously I'm not going to, right. I'm not, I'm not going to do it for, for the sake of just making more money, but there's a, there's a mission in mind. There's something that is tied to what you'd be doing with the money that, that drives you. So some people are like that and right. And then other people are just like, no, I, I just need to keep working because that's when I start dying slowly. That's when I start decaying or, you know, I saw, I saw my mom do this or I saw my dad do that and I don't want to live like this. So this is my desire. And so once I reach this point, anything above that is gravy, right? But I'm not going to just stop because I hit a goal. I'm going to keep, you know, producing, keeping my brain active and stay social and do these things. In the, in the meantime, though, the, fir the first thing that would help you perform at that level, would you say is paying off this car first and then tackling the, the mortgage, the primary mortgage. Absolutely, yeah, I've seen that happen quite often. In this case though, um, what I think would be really advantageous is once we've eliminated the car and then we're, and then we're working on the mortgage, at, at some point it would be very, very advantageous to uh, switch from a second lien to a first lien. And there, might, there, and there might be another bank that might be more attractive. We can ask Allianz if they do a first lien. I don't know if they do, but the, the bank that I'm with called University Bank, they do a six month, a six month intro rate at 4.99 on a first lien. So you could, uh, you can kind of take advantage of like two intro rates, but not back to back. It, w it definitely wouldn't make sense back to back. Uh, we'll see, but I'm, I'm thinking definitely like maybe a year and a half two two years out where it's like, you've got all that equity sitting in, in the property and all you have is the 80 K HELOC and, and definitely we can get like a, a credit line increase. But if we're still, if we're still focusing on eliminating paying down the mortgage, I think there's a world where we can get both done at the same time where we can simultaneously be paying down the mortgage and then using the first lien HELOC in that example to use as capital to invest, redo certain things that you want to do in the home itself, make repairs. And as you, as you begin to phase out of that career of yours and you start taking retirement and you start taking income streams, you have a place to park all this cash, right? Into the first lien. And then on top of that, I'm, I'm thinking really paying attention to that life insurance policy that we pulled 250 K from, uh, just, just evaluating, okay, how's that thing performing? How much are we funding per year? And honestly, the, the amount of money that you would be, you're not, okay. So it's fully funded. Is it a, is it a, re, is it a reduced paid up? Is it a whole life or is it a, a universal life? Not an IUL, just a universal life. You know what you, uh, are you. Are you close with the agent that wrote the policy? Yeah, that'd be great to get the, I would ask for, yeah, I would uh, definitely like to get the full in-force illustration, uh, see how that thing is set up, how it's designed. I've had quite a few clients. Um, as, as we get older, as it relates to IUL policies, generally, they start to get more and more expensive. So we want to pay attention to how much we're drawing, what the cost on the back end is and making sure that that doesn't blow up on us uh, randomly. Yeah. Cause that could definitely, you know, long-term there's things that we could probably leverage with that where it's like, okay, what's the borrowing rate on that compared to our HELOC or, or first lien when it comes to, you know, borrowing. So it might make sense where we pay down so much of the property itself and we can start to pay back the policy loan to then reuse it again. Um, we could also look at what's called a cash value collateral line of credit and potentially get a much better interest rate than a first lien HELOC would. So just always keeping our options open and seeing what where's, what's the cheapest cost to borrow and just always be open uh, to just running the math on that. Those are all wonderful things that we can, you know, 
dig deep on. But for right now, primary thing, close on the home. After you close, I'm assuming you have to wait at least 30 days. There's got to be some, I'm pretty sure there's some sort of wait period before you can apply for a HELOC and then you're good to go. Cool. So yeah, after 30 days, then I'm, you know, boom, apply for the HELOC with Allianz. If you don't already have all your income going to Allianz Bank, that would be something I would do in the meantime so that you create, create that, you know, ease and convenience where you can have all your money going straight to Allianz checking. You have your HELOC linked to that checking. And then whenever you get income come in, we can do velocity banking that much quicker, more efficiently. Correct, that is the most efficient way to do it with a second position HELOC. And what makes it even easier is when it's at the same bank. So when you're, when you when, cause you can go right in your mobile app and you hit transfer and it's instantly in the checking account rather than rather than having to move it to another bank, wait three days, and every time you do that, you're getting charged interest every single day, right? So so when you're able to just transfer out what you need when you need it, you pay even less interest. Uh, it's all it, it's all month to month from from all the cards all the cards that I've used. It's all been it's right. It's all been month to month as they they rack up each each month. Now here's the thing. Um, over, over the years, I'm always looking to improve myself and improve on the things that I talk about. So yes, for majority of the content I've put out in my early years of teaching velocity banking has typically been go shoot for the cashback rewards cards because it creates a, a better discipline for, for the individual to focus on paying off debt and not necessarily using their points to to go spend money now i will say this if you're someone that has discipline and you're not going to go cr go crazy with your credit cards what i have discovered over the years in my own finances is points are actually more valuable than cash majority of the time when it comes to credit cards so let's say you're yeah let's say you're a, a mom you got two kids in Miami, you're in Michigan, and you're going to be traveling multiple times a year. If we were to actually look at, well, what does it cost for you to travel to Miami however many times per year, maybe stay at a hotel or stay with family, then food, then transportation, and we evaluate how much points could cover that expense, what I have discovered for myself in, in my own finances is when I use points, I've already been tracking it for a year now, uh, and I also I also use Amex Hilton, Amex Business Hilton, and then I've got the the timeshare with with Ams with um, Hilton. So I got the timeshare, the points, and everything. And I was running the math, and I was like, oh my goodness, it, if I if I opt in for the points rather than the cash back, I'll actually save about maybe ten grand or more per year in hotel fees, transportation, daily credits in the hotels, um, all, all, all these different things that come with having points. So I was like, that's more valuable than 2% in cashback rewards and the amount of money I would have to spend on 2%. So I get, so I get way more. So in your case, I feel, I feel like, yeah, I, I'd say stick with what you got going on. You're, you're a, your Amex timeshare holder, you've got the Amex Hilton cards, you've got a whole system, I've got a whole system, very familiar with that, and it works very, very well, and I'm disciplined, it sounds like you're very disciplined. Um, there's so much that you can do with those points in terms of you know expenses and all the, tr and they never expire, yeah. <clears throat> and to an extent, they're, they're inflation proof, so it, it holds its value, the, the points, um, o over a long period of time. So that's also right. Free nights, the whole thing. Yeah, right. Or the Wardolf. Right. You know. Yeah. No. Let's let's keep our system going. What I love to do with velocity banking is add it into people's pre-existing system, so it doesn't create confusion, and we get, you know, highest chance of success. Yeah. You've got history with them. You've got a loan with them. I agree. You move. You're moving expense and all that. Yeah. So there's there's the um, so. I, I like to take the best from 
both worlds. And I also, I also like to bring in the emotional piece because at the end of the day, you have to put the human factor into it. Will you, will, will, exact. So that's, these are some critical questions here where it's like, will I perform better in my business? Will I perform better in my decision-making process when it comes to making an investment? Knowing that my primary base, my home base, is paid off. What we have to understand from the perspective of Grant Cardone is Grant, he, he sold his house to then buy an apartment building, right? That's his story. Sold his house, bought an apartment building, and, I, and if I'm not mistaken, lived in that apartment building. So if, you, if you're the type that doesn't care where you live, he don't really care where he lives as long as wherever he's at, it's creating cash flow for the, for the most part. Now, he's at, a, he's at a point now where I do think he has acquired some personal properties over the years, right? So not to say he's contradicting himself, but I think it's proper timing and, and sequencing as it relates to how we receive information from someone saying, don't pay your house off from the other person that says, yes, pay your house off. I think it's exactly. So when you're leveraging other people's talents for, as it relates to investing in, in real estate, I kind of then lean more toward, well, how do I make sure I'm not over leveraging myself. And so that's where I go into my rules of leverage capacity. What can I handle? Does this increase that stress knowing that I have this, this debt on my home? Now, the other part is I also don't come from the camp that just says pay off your home and then look at it because it looks the same. It looks the same when it was in debt, right? So where I'm at is, yeah, let's pay it off, right? And even on the journey of paying it off, when we eventually say convert to a first lien HELOC and you have all this equity available, when you're doing velocity banking, it's automatic that you're paying it down. And then you're just pulling from it according to your leverage capacity, according to how we can offset and what we're creating in cash flow to then invest. And then when the investment matures and you get the principal back plus interest, where does it park? You just park it right back in the first lien. So it's so what happens is our home becomes our checking account. And that's how I have set up in my home. My purchase price on my home was 630. I put 10% down. I actually did a first lien HELOC purchase on that property. So I, I, so I started out the gate with a first lien HELOC. You know, now I got it down to like 380 and I'm still doing velocity banking on it. It's automatic. As I make more money in the business, I just park it in the home. My home is my home is my base. That's where I have my YouTube studio. That's where I'm creative. That's where I'm going to build a family. So so knowing that that's my base and it's secure, that helps me go to bed at night. It helps me perform better. It helps me that helps me make more money in in my business. Knowing that I have this security, right? Um, but obviously, Grant might say, "No, don't worry about security. Go all in, right? Take bets. You know, it, it, it's just." Yeah, it's just different styles. We're both we're both gonna get to the end result based on our purpose, right? So it's just a matter of, of the style of how you get there. So you have to know who you are more than what Grant or myself or Dave Ramsey would say. So you could do you can do right, right. So you have yeah. So because now I'm a homeowner, prior I was in an apartment, I was doing the home office deduction in the apartment. But when you're a homeowner, it's a little bit more cleaner based on what my CPA told me that you do the home office deduction that's standard every year because you have a home office, right? So that's, you don't lose that. That's boom. So you have your home office de deduction, but then you do the Augusta rule with the whole um, renting your business, renting your house to your business for 14 days out of the year. And you have to structure that out properly and effectively and efficiently. And you're then writing checks from the business to yourself tax free and then the and then the business gets a deduction off the you know tax liability that that you bring in so yeah augusta rule if you don't already have a good accountant if you don't already have a good accountant or if you're looking for a relationship in that i do have a team that that i am a i'm a client with um and they 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 serve yeah they serve yeah so i'll, I'll connect you to them they do a really awesome job and they broke that whole thing down for me and it's pretty straightforward it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be for this year because i closed on the home in december of last year so the way my accountant built it out for me i'll look it up real quick so my accountant did a whole 
has like a whole Google spreadsheet for me. And, it, and it's all throughout the year that I'm having these business masterminds, these, you know, three to five hour, maybe six hour days that I'm having a business meeting with myself, my fiance, my mom, wh whomever I want. And I'm discussing all these different business topics. And I, you know, researched, okay, based on the square footage of my studio, how much would it cost me to rent an office space in my area? And I you know I did the math and it's like, you know, comes out to a couple hundred dollars every few hours. And so you do that, you so you space that out. There's a whole template to it. But the way that my accountant has it set up is I'm basically having meetings. I want to say either every other month or every every month almost is how I'm having these. And it's one day business meetings. They're, they're like half day masterminds or full day. I'm doing a little bit of a mix. Okay, so that's the first action step. Get it all now. <laughs> you, you'll you'll definitely enjoy this team that I have because it's it's not just filing every year. It's it's actual it's actual tax strategy, tax planning month to month. And the way they operate is a subscription service. So every month they're producing a report for you. So now you get to know in, in real time how your business is performing and what are your peak peak months, low months. Um, everybody gives suggestions. So it depends on what you need. It varies, right? But I, I can say I'm paying $7.25 a month and that is a uh, tax planning, coaching, filing, bookkeeping. I'm, I'm doing quite a bit. I, yeah, like I'm I'm fully, I have it fully dele delegated and, and that saves me a lot of time. So, you know, they evaluate based on your last year's tax return. They, they literally let you know if they can serve you or not based on how, you know, how you're set up currently. And then based on what you need, they'll make recommendations and they create a basically a customized subscription that makes sense and for me i love it because it's like i don't it's I, I the prior years in my first three four years of business i never knew what my tax expense was going to be for the cpa it was you know could be five grand could be seven could be nine could be three like it just i'm like uh and i always gotta like have money set aside but with a subscription it's like it's that's the set price moving forward not going to change and it's month to month performance and I can reach out to them anytime, set up a call. So yeah, I'll, I'll have that in an email. I'll have that link there. So that'll be one action step. Um, moving forward with Allian Bank, I think that's going to be our, our, our best fit. And we already know what our first move is going to be. Uh, chunking at the car, you get that cash flow immediately, get your feet wet with Velocity Banking, get it going. Yeah. By then, it'll be a little bit less. So you're paying off the car in full, right? Right, so at that point, we would be doing velocity banking on the HELOC itself. So we won't be chunking, right? We're just paying it down. Now, the information that I would need is I'd need to know what the interest rate on the mortgage is. And then I'm gonna, okay, so 6.3. 6.375%, okay. So based on that, we're at the tippy top of that 30 year amortized mortgage so we would come up with a new chunk number based on okay so it's a 20 year got it so we would we would come up with a chunk amount based off of your new cash flow at that point in time so we'd reevaluate the numbers um, but but more than likely it's going to be between what your cash flow times 12 is and 66 percent of the HELOC so we know that 66 percent of the HELOC is 52,800 so we probably shouldn't chunk more than that and no less than cash flow times 12 in a, in a year. So it's going to be between that. And that's how we would, you know, make our chunks toward the, uh, to start hitting away at the, at the mortgage. Correct. Get your win. Co co correct. Right. So basically what ends up happening is we look at your income and, and what will start to happen is you're going to pay the HELOC off. It's going to hit zero, but then you're going to pull money back out because you have to pay bills and expenses. So when the first time that happens, when your HELOC actually, yeah, when it actually goes to zero, that's our first in, that's our first indication that we should be getting ready to make our first chunk toward the mortgage. We don't, we don't necessarily have to wait to get to a true zero balance on the HELOC before 
making our next chunk because it's so cheap to borrow on the HELOC itself. So the earlier we chunk the right, so it's gonna be the, the sweet spot is anywhere between zero and what your monthly income is. So if our monthly income is 13.5, then we can basically make an assumption that from owing 55K on the HELOC, let's say, and I get it all the way down to 13.5, that's my first indication letting me know that I have permission to chunk right now, or I could, or I could wait. It's, it's really no, no sweat, right? It, it, it's really just based on what's going on in your life, right? Is something coming up? Is there a major expense we need to be aware of? Are you traveling? Are you going away? Right? So we just, you know, we'll be very mindful in, in the moment, but these are just good templates to be aware of. You can wait to hit to true zero and say, okay, I'm ready. Or you can do anywhere between zero and thir and 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 third right. So you're like, okay, cool. So we can say, all right, exactly. So we can say, all right, as 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 soon as the HELOC hits thirteen five, then we can just say, okay, fifty two thousand eight hundred minus thirteen five. So I can make say a forty thousand dollar chunk toward my home, right? And then boom, brings the HELOC back up, and then you're doing velocity banking, velocity banking. Once you get down to thirteen five again, do another forty. And you can kind of keep this this rhythm going, and and I and I <laughs> and with I want to say that after you've done about maybe two or three of those, that we really we really should look at the at the first lien HELOC, and we'll start shopping around um, because it, it would it would seem like the type of income you make, the type of cash flow we'll have, being able to free up that thirty five hundred dollar mortgage payment and just have a first lien is also going to be quite effective in terms of how that 3500 works for you in a first lien rather than the first lien mortgage right at the 6.375 percent fun fun stuff how how are you established mm -hmm. and when you say capital investment you're 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 referring to your home that you're going to be moving into doing work on it the, the all three rental properties need work a couple things to consider here is i think we should definitely probably bring in a very very proactive cpa that could help you figure out how to yeah how to maximize it on, on the tax side of things um are you familiar are you familiar with a cost segregation yeah i'm not the most familiar with it either but it's when you basically some to an extent like an engineer or something like that comes into the property they evaluate it and i think i don't know if they're accelerating the depreciation on the property or something to that if i forget how it works but that's something that we would would want to ask a very proactive CPA on on the strategy part. And then the second the second thing is maybe consider bringing in a an adjuster that can do an evaluation on the property because if we can tap into the homeowners insurance on these different properties to say do that bathroom, right? Um, we would identify any natural problems in the property right that occur not 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 self-inflicted but just like natural things that happen that's um so that that might be a, a a play that could be done but how how much money are you thinking in terms of repairs with the hundred thousand that you have the virgil cathedral brady they all need work yeah that, that doesn't seem like something to really stress too much about we have quite a bit of you know capital in there so it's like yeah, that's I'm I'm thinking you were if it was like 50 or something more than that, then I'm like, okay, okay, let's let's look into how do we how do we not have to come so much out of pocket and what are some tools that we could, you know, put out there to leverage. But when it's something small like that in my opinion, based on what you have, right? It's all in context. We have 100,000 just sitting, right? We we could say, okay, this this money sitting there, could I maybe park that money back in my policy? This way I'm not paying so much in interest in, internally in the, in the policy loan. This way it's not just, you know, yeah, because at the end of the day, like, like, right. And I, you know, for me, I, I do fall, I do lean a little more toward any and all capital when it comes to cash. If I don't need to have it in the bank, I'm not going to leave it there. All right. And that's just because of the world that we're in now. Right. Um, with what's going on in, in with everything. It's like, yep, banks have lost credibility over the last two decades or more. It's not looking pretty, but these life insurance companies have, have they've, they've said, they've, you know, 
stayed the test of time all these all these years right it doesn't have to be all at once but it's like exactly it's like whatever i don't need to be there it's like how can i maybe just park that either in my property or park it in my policy and keep keep rotating the funds as as needed so okay that's that's good there absolutely so at in closing i emailed you the uh cpa that i use um, it's a team of people then um, this investment also comes with another 30 minute follow-up call where we just kind of check in. So I'm thinking that it would probably be best to have that 30 minute call either once you apply for the HELOC and get approved or somewhere around that time. So I'm thinking 30 or more or more days out from now would, would be great. Long term, as it relates to just creating financial freedom, have you ever worked with a financial coach before or anything in that? <laughs> Yeah, how valuable would that be in terms of someone that isn't selling you financial products and services, but is more so going over how you operate in your finances, running the numbers, strategizing, you know, bouncing ideas. Our end goal is, you know, financial freedom, kingdom building. You know, did you mentioned earlier that, you know, we had a connection in terms of on the on the spiritual side of things that you really, you know, so I'm assuming that you're a woman of faith and so we we resonate on that and I, you know, I've got big goals and it sounds like you've got big goals as well, things that you want to do, not just make a bunch of money for the sake of making money, but you want to be able to, you know, do things with it. And you're also leaning on God to reveal next steps in terms of where he wants you to move in. And so I think I think financial counseling is also something that I do in conjunction with how I work with folks, especially when they reveal that, that they're a uh, of faith where it's like oh great i can kind of open up that where it's like i can be present in that thought process with the father consulting with the father and also receiving through holy spirit how we operate and then when two or more are gathered so is he and we able to you know bounce these financial conversations and then submit the plans to god and then just accountability so accountability coaching, counseling. Uh, how do you feel about working with me long term on that? So I have a, you'll see a, an automated email that will get sent out just saying, hey, thanks for today's call. And then it'll remind you of the 30 minute call that we'll have later. There'll be a, there'll be a video that you can watch and it literally breaks down this program I put together. It's a 10 year, com yeah, 10, 10 year commitment where I just work with people for a really long time to achieve success and kind of breaks down all these different things, conversations. So love you for you to take a look at that. And then it just shows the the program, the the pricing, all that. There's two options. I've got a you know one time option of 4K, and then a payment plan of 375 a month. Whichever you decide, that'll be the the set price. That's not changing. So whether whether you decide six months from now or six six weeks or a year out um, some people will do like another consultation before getting involved long term just making sure that we're you know a right fit for each other but that but that would be the next steps and then in in the meantime it's just holding you accountable so i'm available you can email me you can let me know hey i did this i did that this is done that sort of thing and you know, I'm, I'm constantly dropping content on the YouTube channel and I do, you know, free workshops. So you'll see emails letting you know, hey, I'm doing this. Or I'm talking about this, uh, all these different things. Uh, so just know that I'm available. You can reach out, ask questions. Something's not clear. Um, this is what I this is what I do and plan on doing this is what this is where God has me and I'm not moving <laughs> It most likely won't. I, I really don't see them, you know, changing that right now. I mean, if if. If anything, it would go lower, not higher. Because if they cut, if they cut rates right in the next six months, then intro intro rates intro rates would be slightly lower. Yeah, I don't, I don't, really, I think rates are going to stay where they're where they're at right now. I don't think they're going up. I don't think they're going down. If they do go down, they're not going down more than a point, probably a half, if that. Okay, wonderful, awesome. Well, I I look forward to working more with you, and. Just know that you've got that 30 minute follow up. They'll definitely use that when the time's right. And I wish you the rest of a well rest of your day. Absolutely. God bless. Bye now.